On the build show today, we're talking spray foam. The crew is at my house, and I've got two brand new spray foam products that have some pretty bold claims, including a very low global warming potential and environmental impact, and a couple of other very impressive things that I've never seen in a spray foam product before. Today's video, all about some new spray foams. Let's get going. Hey guys, I want to introduce you to Ken Allison. He's the VP of Training and Development at IDI. And Ken, you guys are a giant insulation distributor. I get my rock wool from you. Actually, I should say my insulator gets my rock wool from you. And you also rep several different spray foam and other bat yes, and board uh, materials. But specifically, we're talking about two brand new spray foams today. What are we spraying today? So Matt, this Ultra Pure product, this is a really unique product from Natural Polymers where they are making a product that is so environmentally responsible that the profile on this gets us down into the below quantifiable limits range. All that means is we're literally talking zero total VOCs, Dang. zero aldehydes, formaldehyde, things like that. There's uh -huh. actually aldehyde scavengers in this that grab onto the aldehydes and make them too large to come out of the foam. So with a product like this, the only place you can get this product is IDI because natural polymers want you to go through training to be even able to spray this product. That's fantastic, I so, love to hear that. To back that up, our goal is to make it in the field as good of a product as it is in the lab. Yeah. So for that, we invited Travis West from Indoor Air Quality to come out and test it to make sure we're getting what we're supposed to be getting. Let's go meet Travis. All right, guys, let me introduce you to Travis West with Building Air Quality. Now, Travis, you're an industrial hygienist. Yep. Tell me how you're going to check the indoor air quality levels both before, during, and after on this house. Well, Matt, I've got two direct reading instruments. One tells us TVOCs. It's direct reading, meaning I can get the numbers right now. The other one looks at aldehydes. So we're going to run the samples periodically. We're going to run them in the same area during the course of the day. So when they spray it, we're going to be as close as we can and, and check those levels then and then I'll come back every hour and run them again to see if there's a deterioration rate. We're also gonna be here tomorrow. So we'll come back tomorrow and check that same area and hopefully the numbers will be low. I expect they're gonna be low to begin with because we're working with a unique product here. Yeah, I'm and curious to see if it actually uh, comes through that's promised. Yeah, well, we'll find out. That's what these instruments will do. So tell me, total VOCs. Right, volatile um, organic compounds. What did you find before these guys started spraying? We found some evidence of it, but really the evidence that we saw was related to the ceiling that was done with the can foam that you were using. <laughs> uh, yeah. I tried to get here before anybody did anything, but I was a little bit late for that. You guys started sealing up some Yeah, so we had crevices. a can foam and we're using that in a few places, including some windows, and that actually registered as some VOCs coming It did, out. it registered VOCs both at the far end as well as this end of the house. That's so good for me to know. I builder. know it's coming out of those cans. Yep. Hopefully now the levels will be a little bit lower because that's had a chance to cure, but I don't know. We'll see what those say. Now this one reads aldehydes. I'm assuming that also means formaldehydes, right? That's Which I know is, uh, you know, just as a layman is not good for me. Right, right. And the foam that we're going to be using in your house has lower emissions of both the TVOCs and the aldehydes based on the laboratory data that I've seen and some of the samples that we've done in the past. So I'm looking forward to seeing low numbers in your house as well. Let's find out. We're, we're, uh, we're going to all find out together. Let's yeah. get going, guys. You ready? Ken, we've been spraying over here with some clothes cell on this roof line, and the guys just took a break for an hour or so, and we walked back in. And there's something noticeably different in here than most spray foam jobs. And to me, that is, I don't smell anything. What's going on here? It's true. So most foams, you have a re-entry of 12 hours, mm -hmm. and you're going to smell it. Well, the reason we don't smell this now, it's been about an hour, so we can re-enter now without a mask. But you're right, there isn't a smell. And this is the ultra pure foam. So what ultra pure really means is they are taking out the halogenated uh, flame retardants. Okay. They're selecting each material in order to get the lowest VOC profile possible. And how low is that VOC? Well, when you look at it in the lab, it's below quantifiable limits. Wow. We're obviously not in a lab setting. Sure. And the one thing that we don't have in your house, you know, this house, 
Uh, you've said it in other videos, this is extremely tight. Right. Most houses that we're out on, you've got wind blowing through, the doors are open. Yeah. This is 0 0.8 air changes. Basically, we're spraying foam in a can. And so we wanted to bring an industrial hygienist out and, and have them actually test it. But even with this, when I break normal foam open, you can see I've got really good cell structure here. Yeah, that looks great. Check that out. It's nice and tight. It's not uh, it's not kind of big bubbles, it's all nice tight yeah, It's very foam. uniform foam and mm -hmm. usually with a normal foam when you break it open and smell that you're going to smell the amines. You're going to be able to, you're going to pick up some scent. I don't smell anything on yeah, this. Yeah, I don't smell anything. So it's really done well and I asked the guy about it, he said it's a joy to spray, he likes the way it sprays. So this is, just think of when I'm using better ingredients. I could go to, let's say Whole Foods or you know one of the nicer stores, pick up that red mill flour, the, you know, it's multi-dollars per pound kind of stuff. And yep. I can use Ghirardelli chocolate and we can make amazing cookies. Or I can just go get the off the shelf, mm. you know, no name brand flour, no name brand chocolate. Right. It's almost chocolate. It'll still make cookies. It still makes cookies. You'd still get foam. And that's basically what you're saying this chemical set is with Hyperpure, that they're using the better ingredients that are specially selected to not have a bunch of off-gassing of VOCs. Yes, they are, the Ultra Pure is designed to have the lowest VOC profile possible in a foam. There's even, uh, when we test, I said we're below quantifiable limits. There are aldehyde scavengers in this technology, mm -hmm. meaning formaldehyde or any other aldehyde. What it does is grabs onto that molecule and it makes it too large to come out of the foam. Interesting. So therefore, it's trapped. So this is far and away the best technology. You can even use stuff like this in homes where you've got a lot of people with sensitivities. They, you know, dust problems, mm -hmm. you know, respiratory issues. You don't want them here when you're spraying. I mean, right. obviously we're okay. Yeah. But if I was hypersensitive, I would not want to be you're here while sure they're spraying. You're going to fully ventilated. I'd have them out of here for a month yeah. before I even brought them in. That way everything was completely off gas. Plus, it's new construction. Yeah. New construction already has a lot of VOCs that right. are built up in a property, so we want to make sure there's a plan to let them in. But great product. Love it. Let's go talk to Travis. All right, Travis, the guys sprayed this whole room, and I noticed you were out there with the equipment making some notes. Talk to me about what you found with this spray foam versus some typical spray foams that you've tested. Well, specifically, Matt, I mean, let's talk about typical spray foams. Uh, one of the most recent projects I did Aldehydes, the big issue is aldehydes, they range from 34.79 to 6936. Those are the numbers that I'm looking at. It's called micrograms per cubic meter. Okay. Here, they're 30 times less. The maximum I saw here was 1.98 compared with the minimum on the other project of 3479. Wow. And that's while these guys were spraying in I was right 15 here feet away spraying. from them while they were spraying. So 30 times less than typical spray foams. Not zero. Not zero, no. But, but really, really low 30 times in less is a big, that's a big jump. It's an that's amazing leap. The other one's a total volatile organic compounds, TVOCs. They ranged on the other project from 0.52 to 171. 171 is the highest mark that we got throughout the course of that day. And they had plenty of ventilation running through that building. Yep. There was very little ventilation running through your house while yep. I was doing it. Same situation. I was near the guys who were spraying. It didn't exceed 0.63. So that's one third with no ventilation yeah. versus the other building at 1.71 with and, lots of a lot of ventilation. And that's so. at the time they're spraying. Here right. we are an hour later. I'm not smelling anything. Are you? I'm not smelling anything. I'm amazed at that. That's remarkable. Yeah, typically at this point, you're still smelling those VOCs oh, yeah. in the building. And that's a very not discernible odor. Yet. I mean, it's one that once you smell it, you know what it smells like and yeah. you can't lose that smell. And I don't smell it at all here. Love it. Travis, we're going to let the guys keep spraying and I'm going to check back with you after we ventilate it overnight. And let's pick this video back up tomorrow morning. Yeah, I'm all So that down. after 12 hours or so, we can see what the building looks like. I can't like. wait, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you in the morning. All right, guys, it's been 12 hours since the crew finished. They finished up about 6.30 last night. Uh, it's more than that, 13 hours, and it's 7.30 on my watch. I believe that Travis is here in the back corner. Hey, Travis, good morning. Hey, Matt, good morning, I'm back here. All right, man. I see you got the equipment. Oh yeah, we've been running tests. I've got three results so far, so. What, do you, what have you been finding so far? The numbers keep going down and going down. I'm telling you, the aldehyde numbers, uh, yesterday they were somewhere between three and four consistently uh -huh. during the spraying. And then of course when they stopped or when they moved elsewhere, the numbers in this room started coming down. This morning they're not even one. It's 0 0.78, 0 0.94. 
That's amazing. That's that is awesome. really amazing. Considering the experience I've got in other uh, environments where we've done mm -hmm. other kinds of spray foam, it's this is really phenomenal. That's fantastic. And the big thing is the TVOCs. Look at this. 0 0.00. 0 0.00. <laughs> I Parts mean, per million. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. After 12 hours of evacuation. After 12 hours of evacuation, yeah. That's crazy. So it, this stuff is cured. Tell me, what do you think? How's it smell? I mean, that's the crazy part, is I was expecting to smell something when I came in. Yeah. You know, 12 hours after a spray foam job, you normally smell something. Right. I honestly don't smell anything right now. I've got a real sensitive nose, because all I do is indoor air quality, and I don't smell anything, so... That's pretty amazing. It is. I'm real impressed. I, I've never seen this in a, on a spray job before. I mean, so far, this foam that's got a lot of hype is actually living up to the hype, would you say? So far, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see what else goes on today, but I don't expect the numbers to change. I'd be surprised if they do go up beyond what we saw yesterday. I think it's going to be a great test for us. Good stuff, man. We're going to yeah. let the, co the crew keep going. We'll check in with you later. Guys, let me introduce you to Walter, the owner of Performance Spray Foam. Walter, I appreciate you coming down, dude. I know you're based in DFW, but you also have an Austin branch, but you guys travel quite a bit, don't you? Yeah, we, uh, we're based out of Dallas-Fort Worth, McKinney, Texas to be exact, and we, uh, we travel 120 mile radius to the Metroplex. Woo. Um, we currently are working on our Kyle location to, to service Hill Country and Austin and San Antonio from one spot. Dang. We're down to College Station. Demand is up in Texas. There's a lot of construction in Texas. That it is. Now, Walter, you can't spray the whole country, though. So people watching this that are watching from all over the place that are interested uh, in particular in this foam that we're spraying or in general a good spray foam job, what can people look for? Like, as a contractor, how do you tell people how to find another good contractor? For, for us, when we, when we got started in this industry 18 years ago, we had to align ourselves with a, a major foam manufacturer and a major foam supplier. Okay. That way we can get localized training. Smart. Uh, manufacturer allowed us to align ourselves with that supplier who they trusted. Um, some suppliers, you know, focus on all different types of foam manufacturers, mm -hmm. and then some suppliers only deal with the elite foam manufacturers, which helps us get the training and knowledge we need. Yeah, yeah. Now this natural polymers, um, is that one that you spray all the time exclusively, or that's one that's in your kit of, uh, of or your quiver, I should say, where you can shoot different arrows? So we, we don't like to jump around from supplier, or from foam manufacturer to foam manufacturer. We like to stick with one. Okay. And as long as the foam is consistent, we can trust the, the chemist behind the product mm -hmm. and the, the supplier to the product, we will stick with it. We've yeah. actually been using natural polymers since their inception. Is that right? And we don't plan to go anywhere. That's great. Talk to me about training. So you've got like 40 guys. Um, how, do the, how do you make sure that you've got consistently spraying across that many different job sites with that many rigs? It's, it's obviously a headache, but you, you have to make that priority. Mm -hmm. if, you, if your guys aren't properly trained, a lot of things can go wrong in the spray foam business. Yeah. It's not just cut and dry, get a, in a, get a foam rig and just start spraying. It's, it can create issues and problems that you, know, you don't want for your homeowners, yeah. more or less the, yourself. Yeah, that's right. Now, Walter, we were talking about this earlier, but everybody's seen some horror story on the internet about, oh, the spray foam job went wrong. Uh, I think there's truth in those. I don't think those people are crazy. But what do you attribute that to? You know, uh, I can't imagine that's a large percentage of the spray foam jobs out there, but it is a percentage. Where do you think those uh, those problem jobs come from? The the biggest problem we face in this industry is that people get a, get a good amount of money together, buy mm -hmm. a spray foam rig, and think they're now a spray foam company. <laughs> they don't they don't focus the time and attention needed on training and understanding of what we do. Yeah, yeah. and that's it's a big part. Yeah. It's there's a lot more involved than just pulling the trigger of a spray foam gun. For sure, and that rig is an expensive rig, and you're basically kind of on-site chemists, right? Yeah, more or less, you know, I, I call it thermal engineering. We, we, you know, we're taking two products to make one, yep. but if you don't do it right, you can make, make a bigger problem for yourself and your homeowner. Yeah, that's right. Now, Walter, I saw your guys spraying a bunch of what we in the industry called surfboards. Uh, explain what that is and why you guys do that. So the first thing we have to do is once we get the, the temperatures up to right and we ensure that our mixture is properly 
um, set on ratio mm -hmm. to make good foam, we have to spray passes. We call them bunts. Okay. So we spray it on a piece of plastic inside the home or outside the home, depending on you know the the free flowing airspace for sure. for venting. Sure. And that way we can take and cut the pieces in half and look at the cellular structure to make sure we have properly made foam. I gotcha. So I cut one of those open yesterday with Ken from IDI. And I saw that, that that piece was super uniform, really, really tight. This is closed cell foam too, which is naturally has a tighter cell structure. That's, I'm assuming, what your guys are looking for to Correct. make sure that everything's looking good. Yeah, the, the biggest thing is you're looking for discolorations. That can tell you a lot whether you're, you're A side rich or B side rich. Mm -hmm. um, you're looking for um, the, the cells to be uniform. Closed cell has you know microscopic structures that collapse once it's applicated, and that's what makes it hard like a tabletop. Yeah. Versus open cell has microscopic holes that are filled full of air. Gotcha. And so it's soft and spongy like. And we have to look for consistencies. Spray foam can be very consistent. And if it's inconsistent, then you can create a bad product for your homeowner. Walter, tell me about some of the issues that can that can happen if a non properly trained crew is just showing up and starting to spray foam. When you're non properly trained, you just assume that you know the the A and the B will come together, come out the gun, create good foam. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not the case. There's 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 time and effort needed to preheat and mix the chemicals, depending on the type of product you're spraying. Yep. Testing it before you applicate it into a house. The problem that we're seeing is when people aren't having the proper education and training, they think they can just pull up to a job site, start the generator, <laughs> get the machines turned on, and start spraying foam. Yeah, there's more to it than that. There, there's a lot more to it. Yeah. And we see cold foam, off-ratio foam. Um, they don't know better. Yeah. You know, we, we, so like when we see this, this issue happening on, on, online, mm -hmm. we try to reach out to these typical companies and try to push them in the direction of training. Yep. Because we don't want it to be bad for them or the industry, but more the homeowner. Because people become sick with improperly installed products. Totally. Yeah, and, and, just, and just like in my industry, like yours, one or two bad apples means that everyone says, or that there are people that say, oh, spray foam is terrible. But no, you guys are doing a fantastic job. You got a pro crew. The foam looks beautiful. And the crazy part about this particular foam we're spraying is I'm not smelling anything the day after. Once the sheet rocks up in this house, no one will have any clue what the insulation is behind the walls. It might as well be, uh, you know, wool from lambs or something back there. No one will know. Uh, so Walter, really appreciate your professionalism. Absolutely. You know, one thing I forgot to ask you though, Walter, um, you mentioned earlier that your crew is really well trained. In fact, uh, I found you through a referral from IDI, which is a pretty large uh, distributor. Um, is that a good way for people to find out good crews like you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, earlier on in my career, we were using just a major manufacturer where we went to Canada, got trained, spent mm -hmm. a week up there, came back gung-ho. And then as time progressed back in 2011, we decided to line ourselves with a, with a local supplier mm -hmm. because of their, their reach and their, their ability to train and have understanding, but right. more so accessibility. They're yeah. local. Yeah, you yeah. know, there are over 60 locations that we can get access to them and I personally talk to the general manager if needed. How about that? And that's very important to, to our growing business and training. And every three months there's a training class and yeah. in our local area and if not in another area. And it's, it's very important that you align yourself with particular companies like that who believe in what you believe in, the values of education. Yeah, yeah. Walter, really appreciate it, man. Absolutely. I'll put a link in the description for Walter's company. If you're in this uh, kind of Texas region where he operates, highly recommend him. Great crew, and the foam job here is looking fantastic. But that being said, we got to get out of the house because your crew is ready to spray, Absolutely. man. Let's get out of here. All right, Ken, I got to say, man, Travis's results, impressive. It's a bold claim to say these really, really low numbers in the lab, but to show it in the field when we're, you know, we're mixing chemistry in a truck, it shows that not only do we have a great applicator who's well-trained, but the product actually is going to perform like the data sheet says it's going to perform, which was cool. And for me, the ultimate test was, I walked in this morning, and frankly, I even walked in after an hour of them spraying. You don't smell anything. You My don't. sniffer doesn't detect that weird spray foam smell that yeah. feels like new car smell or uh, chemicals that you're spraying for cleaning smell. That's kind of the smell of VOCs in my mind. So it obviously, not only on the testing, but to my nose, has a very, very low VOC concentration. Yeah, this morning we walk in and, you know, the house essentially at point eight air changes before we got started. 
the house is essentially a sealed can. Yep. And we walked in this morning to zero total VOCs. Yeah, that's awesome. I was thrilled, yeah. absolutely thrilled. And it's, it is a testament to Walter doing such a great job of processing this product. Yeah, these guys are great. All right, Ken, we already talked about the roof foam, which was that ultra pure. Talk to me about this product that's in our walls. I would love to talk about this. This is PestGuard. And one thing I would tell you, this is kind of our mad scientist in the foam industry. <laughs> he starts, yo, with the Ultra Pure saying, hey, I can do something where you've got such low VOCs. Uh -huh. And a lot of that, I got a call today from him and the supplier said, hey, did you realize that over half of the oils that you're using, the reactive oils to make the plastics, are bio oils. Huh. They're renewable. Bio meaning they're from a plant-based oil, Absolutely. not from petroleum that's pulled out of the ground. They're a renewable plant source. Huh. That way, that was part of why the VOCs are so low on this particular product that we just used. Got it. Also, the natural polymers plant is very sustainable. They are on solar. There's a solar array across the street, and they're going all solar by putting another array on top of the building this summer. That's cool. Well, in that same vein, this guy's constantly thinking, and he thought up a way to stop mice. Well, I should say deter, we're supposed to use that word, but so <laughs> far it's stopped mice, it's stopped termites, it's stopped carpenter ants. So from what we can tell, it's almost like foam that has thumbtacks coated in acid, and when they take a bite, they kind of like, well, I'd rather die than go through that. So it is totally non-toxic in terms of what the deterrent is. Right. I wouldn't tell you to eat the foam, but you know, the deterrent is non-toxic. And as you can tell, it's making good foam, it's doing well in the walls, and I loved what you said the other day, which is, you've already coated the lower part, the mm -hmm. wood. Yep. Well, we've taken care of the foam. Yeah, this is that borate treatment that we put on that's been green tinted. So I've got borates that have soaked in here. Now we've got a foam that's gonna repel them, so we've really kind of double dipped on keeping those pests out of the building, and especially the lower part of the building's really the most important part. But I would mention too that closed cell foam in a closed attic assembly means that I don't have any vents into the house. And vents are how cockroaches and mice and rats and uh, you know all those pests, uh, pests from the outside, big or small, tend to get into buildings. So having a really tight enclosure from an air tightness perspective uh, and an energy efficiency perspective also means you've got a very pest proof home as well. Yes, I am so glad you brought that up because this is what they're preaching to the big builders at this point. Every builder should realize health is the number one issue mm -hmm. and mitigated pest control, which is yeah. what Healthy Homes and yeah. Hayward, they're all pushing that right yeah. now. And rightfully so, if we seal all the holes, things don't get in. Yep, that's right. It's life without chemistry. It's good stuff, man. This is beautiful stuff, and I am so glad you gave us the opportunity to use this here. It's been awesome. All right, Ken, so let's wrap this up. We've got two basically new products that aren't available everywhere yet from, Tim, tell me the name of the company again. Natural Polymers. From Natural In Polymers. both PestGuard and Ultra Pure, you must come to class. They're only available through IDI because okay. the manufacturer does not want someone spraying that product that is not trained to process it correctly. Got it, so if someone watching this wants this or one of these two sprayed at their house, how could they figure out an applicator that would spray that for them? They could reach out to Natural Polymers or certainly reach out to IDI because they're coming through our training and we would be able to get you information on people in that area. Gotcha. Guys, I'll put a link to IDI in the description so you can get a hold of them and figure out where there might be a local distributor and then they can get you linked up with a spray foam contractor that's one of their preferred contractors. But hopefully you learned something here. This was meant to educate you uh, and dispel some of the myths that are out there uh, from the spray foam world. Ken, I really appreciate your friendship over the years, Thank man. You, you guys man. are doing great work. If you're not currently a subscriber, guys, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here in the Build Show every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the Build Show. <laughs>